prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Peter, like so many of us here, 
Confess and believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said it with his lips, he believed it in his heart, all that was true about Peter. Yet like so many of us, he was not yet willing to accept the full consequences of that faith. In some sense, Peter only gave a partial answer to the question, Who am I? He was right to say, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was not the reincarnation of John the Baptist or the second coming of Elijah or one of the prophets. No, that's not who Jesus was. He was the Christ, the Son of the living God. But that's not all of who Jesus is. So immediately after Peter makes his confession, Jesus completes, so to speak, the revelation. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected. In other words, he is not only the Son of God in heaven, glorious, seated at the right hand of the Father, he is also the suffering servant, the Son of Man on earth, who must suffer be rejected, take up his cross, and die for our salvation. That's part of who Jesus is. And if we are to be like Jesus, and we are to be his disciples, then we too must endure our cross, take up our cross, and follow him. St. Peter was witness to so many miracles during his following of the Lord. He basked in the glory of being an intimate disciple of Jesus while the crowds of thousands praised him and cried out, Hosanna, the son of David, the king of Israel. Peter loved that glory. He loved being a groupie of Jesus, getting all that praise. But then when he heard about the shame of the cross, Peter was scandalized. You know, we tend to think that Peter was a coward. He was afraid of dying for the Lord. But that's not true. In fact, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Judas came to betray him, Peter pulled out a sword in spite of the obvious numbers against him. Peter was willing to die in a fight for our Lord. He wasn't a coward. But when Jesus said, Put that sword back. Are you willing to die as a criminal with me? That's when Peter balked. That's when he was scandalized. Peter was not willing to endure the shame of the cross. Because the shame of the cross isn't just suffering. It's being rejected by men. And that is a very hard thing for a Christian to endure. And Peter's faith was not yet strong enough to endure that part of following Jesus. When we confront suffering, our own crosses, we instinctively want to rebel. We want to drop our cross wherever it comes to us. But Jesus gave us an example and he won for us the grace not to rebel. As we read in today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah, I have not rebelled. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me. My face I did not shield. There's an instinctive desire to throw off suffering. And the Lord taught us and won for us the grace to embrace that suffering, not to reject it. But it's not only the suffering we fear, it's also the shame. It's a shame of being rejected by men when we profess Jesus. It's one thing to die in cancer, die of cancer in a bed. It's another thing to die because we profess the Lord Jesus and we're told that we are wicked for doing so. We have plenty of opportunities for that, my brothers and sisters. If you go on an ordinary street corner and start reading passages out of the Bible that aren't popular today, you will be rejected by men. You will be rejected by men. But even in being shamed, 
and rejected, the Lord too also gives us an example. Because he goes on to say, The Lord God is my help, and therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing I shall not be put to shame. Because the only shame that we should fear is shame before the throne of God at the final judgment. All of us shall have to stand and render an account of our deeds and our words before the judgment seat of God. And then we will not care much about what men thought in our lifetime. We shall not be put to shame before God if we follow the Lord Jesus. So Peter had that faith in Jesus, but he didn't yet have the works that manifested that his faith was alive. We too, if we are unwilling to carry a cross for and with Jesus, do not have that living faith. It's one thing to have faith. It's another thing to have living faith. For what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can such faith save him? No. Faith without works is dead. And the work that we must do in order to have living faith is to take up that cross and follow Jesus and boldly proclaim ourselves as disciples of Jesus in spite of what the world says, in spite of the fact that the world has rejected the teachings of Christ and his church about marriage, about family, about morality, in spite of all those things. Our faith is not alive until we take up that cross and follow Jesus. We are frightened by our crosses, I know. I'm frightened by my cross. But we should take consolation. Jesus was frightened too by his cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to his Father, Father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. If not my will, but thine be done. He embraced his cross, though he feared it, because he loved us so much. He knew that was his Father's will for saving us. Should we not be ashamed to walk away from our crosses? Do we not have enough love for Jesus to bear even a small splinter of his cross together with him? Dearly beloved, suffering is inevitable. Death is inevitable. So why not suffer and die for a noble cause? Why not suffer and die for Jesus? I have many spiritual directees that are in the military. One young man came to me because he was being sent to a dangerous place. And he told me he was afraid to stay in the military. He was afraid because he might die fighting for his country. And I told him, Son, do not be afraid of death. What matters is not how long your life is, but how good your life is. You will die one day. And the Lord Jesus knows the number of your days. You could die easily in a train wreck or <laughs> a car accident or crossing the street. Why not die for a noble purpose then? Don't be afraid of living your life for a noble cause. Today is a feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. She stood by the cross and strengthened her son. She did. She strengthened her son. Gave him consolation while he hung upon the cross. And she will stand by our crosses too. She will strengthen us. For it is just when we stand in the shadow of the cross that Mary becomes our mother. How lucky we would be to live, to die with Jesus and Mary, and thereby to obtain eternal life and reign with Him forever in heaven. Amen.